Okay, this is a tutorial for changing a material in a blueprint during a game. So for example, in our game, we have a cannon where you can charge the shot to do a stronger attack, and we wanted a visual representation of that. And what we first came to mind was the cannon changing colors. So if you hold right click in our game or whatever else, the cannon changes colors as it is more or less effective. And it's very simple, but it wasn't the easiest thing to figure out because a lot of tutorials are in uh, UE4 still. So just gonna quickly run through that and how you could maybe use it in different ways. So, there's a couple components to this. Firstly would be the sort of material side. Then there is the dynamic material instance and then there is just plugging it into something with the set vector material value and i'm going to go over all those right now so first really simply whatever your material is you need parameters they can't just be colors you need to convert to parameter um, so make sure you have a parameter for whatever you're using in this case i'm going to go over a color but it also works with um like scalar values, like roughness or metallicness or whatever. So whatever you name this, it is very important. So make it something simple that you remember. Mine, I'm going to do boat color because I'm going to make the boat color change just to show you all. So I've made a color and I've set it to a parameter and it's named boat color. Perfect. Now the next step is you can't animate materials from what I understand, but you can animate material instances. So take that material you just made and create a material instance. I have already done that and I've named it ship M, ship material. And it has those two parameters from its parent material or master material, whatever you wanna call it. So now congratulations, your material is set up. Next part is you're gonna to wanna to go into your world level blueprint thing. That is gonna be up here. If you don't know where that is, you can open up level blueprint. It's pretty darn simple. Uh, yours might be blank. You might have stuff in it, whatever. It's all you need is the event begin play node and a create dynamic, ooh, create dynamic material instance. Those are the two nodes you need. I already have it set up for the cannon color, but I'm just going to add this on. So if you have a lot of materials in your color, you can literally, in your game, wow. You can just string them together. Uh, it's very simple. And then the only thing you need to do in here is type in that material name. So mine is that instance, which I named ship underscore M. I'm gonna find that. And your second step is set up. What this is doing is it is telling the game that this material needs to be changeable. And there you go. I think Event Begin Play is the easiest one to use because it just happens at the beginning of the game and sets it up. Easy done. So this next part is going to look really complicated, but I promise it's not. This is the blueprint we have for our cannon shot. So all of this is pretty much irrelevant, uh, but I'm going to show it nonetheless. So we have the input, which is the holding right click, going into a timeline, which then does physics-y crap. But what I wanted to do is use this timeline to make a color range. So what I'm doing in this tutorial is I'm adding a color track to a timeline. Uh, there, I'm sure there's other ways to make different colors change, but this is just the easy one that I found that I really like. Um, and I was able to just sync it with this track right here, which is the strength of our cannonballs. So literally, I can indicate the perfect time to shoot the cannon based on how strong it's gonna be. And all I need to do is mainly this node right here. So when you have a timeline like that and you've set up a color track, you can just add color track and make whatever colors you want on here. Double click to add a color on the top and double click to add an opacity value on the bottom. Um, whenever that's set up, you can just go in and this will appear, your color track name will appear with this little blue node. And all you need to do is create a set vector parameter value. So I'm going to add a pin to this sequence because I'm adding a new one to this exact same sequence. 
And again, you could add this into whatever pre-existing mechanic you want. It doesn't have to be, you know, one specific set thing. This is just the example from our game that works really well. So set uh, vector parameter value. Oh, it needs to be set vector parameter value on materials. So I'm just going to copy this node over. Uh, very important note, though, if you copy it over, it will come with the name. So make sure you change that. Oh, again, this is the parameter name, not the material name. So this needs to be named boat color. Wow. Okay. Boat underscore color. And all I'm going to do is drag in this new pin from my sequence. I'm using a sequence because I have three different things coming off this timeline. That might be helpful to you. That might not. Just drag that pin into there. And I'm going to just drag cannon color up here. And it automatically converts that to whatever is going on up there. And all you need to do now is reference the thing you're doing. Which in this case, uh, I want to change the boat color. So there's the boat of uh, this blueprint. This is that boat. And all you need to do is make sure I have my material set to ship M done. Um, and there you go. That should be it. Uh, it's pretty simple, but if you don't know what the nodes are, it probably gets confusing. Moment of truth as we rise up to the top. And yes, perfectly changing. And of course, you can do this with other things as well. For example, I could go in there and I could even do a different timeline so I could have the ship do different colors or whatever else. Or I could use the same timeline and I could add a different color to it. So I could add boat color and I could make it just go from black to white because why not? I'll just add one node in just for fun so you guys can see it happen once at least. Um, I'll even mess with the opacity because that sounds kind of fun. Uh, I don't know what that's going to look like, but sure. There we go. There's my color track. And I'm going to just drag this into that now. And I'm going to kill the other one. It killed it for me. Compile. And let's see what that looks like. Of course, my boat needs to rise all the way to the surface first because bad physics. Uh, and there we go. It looks like it doesn't do opacity with this certain thing i'm sure there's a way to do it but it's just not set up right but again there you go colors are changing based on an input i'm doing um and then you might notice that the cannon is resetting back to its original state and the boat isn't right now uh, if that's relevant to you all i did is um, we have a stop cannon charging event which is just when the button is no longer being pressed um I am just setting the vector parameter value to the original color. Um, and that's that's it. This is as simple as it gets. Um, and of course, if you really want, you can probably mess with a scalar thing. I could probably just do a like, I'm guessing I could do a float track and I can name this uh, roughness. Again, I'm just being thorough because I can, and it might be helpful. Uh, so I've just created a track, and I need to add points to it, which, for some reason, I'm having a hard time with. Uh, add a key to float curve, whatever. So I'm going to drag that up there, and then add a key here, and add a key here. So it should get uh, shinier and then less shiny, I think, is how roughness works. I think that's one is shiny, zero is rough. Uh, just kidding, other way around. So it should be shiny, rough, shiny. Uh, and all I should have to do is make another thing. But instead of a vector parameter value, this is going to be a scalar. So set scalar parameter value on materials, boat. And look at that, it comes with the node pre-plugged in. Super easy wheezies. I'm just going to add another track. Of course, this is getting messy at this point. But, you know, just for fun. There is that. That's set up. I need to name this. I believe this was called Ship Rough. Um, I'm not consistent with my naming at all. This is boat, this is ship, but that looks correct. I'm going to just compile that. And if I did that right, I haven't actually tested this out before. Um, if I did that right, that material should go rough and shiny and shiny and rough. 
and it's kind of hard to tell, admittedly. Um, but I could add a print string to the end of it saying roughness, just to confirm that that is happening. Yeah, so that is happening. It's probably just not very clear because I have really flat materials and the color's changing. But again, that is how you would set up a scalar track too. Um, if this was helpful at all, like, subscribe, please. If you have any other questions, comment it. I'd love to look into it. I'm trying to figure this out myself. Um, making this because I didn't find a tutorial for how to do this in Unreal 5 and just the node names are very specific, and some nodes sound like they will work, but they just don't. So, yeah, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.